Tractate Sanhedrin, page 59, we start with page 58b, 15 lines from the bottom of the page. Amar Rabbi Hanina Nochri, Sheikai et Yisrael Chayav Mita, Shenemar Rabbi Yifin Kov Achor Vayaret In En Ki En Ish Vayach Et Amitzri Begomer. Amar Rabbi Hanina, O Soter Lo Oshel Yisrael, Kilo Soter Lo Oshel Shechina, Shenemar Mokesh Adam Yala Kodesh. In general, we talk here about the severity of a physical abuse by striking a person. Um, is the notion, as the Rambam said, of excommunication applies to someone who strikes his fellow, they bring the sources for that. And obviously, the whole idea of um, using a physical, um, um, uh, hitting each other, it's, it's prohibited, is a story about the Ger Rebbe, the former Hasidic sect of Gur. Um, um, it was uh, his assistant that was overwhelmed with people. So in those days, it was different. He strikes someone. And the Rebbe walk in, and they just gather together a group for afternoon service. And the Rebbe said to him, um, you cannot include it in the quorum. And he said, why? And he said, because you strike someone. So it is a serious concept. Here is the word of the Rambam. It's Hilchot uh, Chovelu Mazik, chapter 5. It's also in the code, Choshen Mishpat, chapter 420. I'm reading from Koran edition, the translation. It said, one who raises his hand to strike another is called wicked, even if he ultimately did not strike him. That's basically the view of Reish Lakish. But he further said that the early sages imposed the punishment of excommunication, one who strikes another, banning him from being included in a prayer quorum. So therefore, one who strikes another will need to request from the court that his excommunication be lifted. Magbia Avdo Shabbat Siman. This is the mnemonic of the next several subject. Amar Yosh Lakish Magbia Avdo Al Chaverah Afal Pishlo Ikar Nikar Rashash Nemar Vayomer Al Rashal Amad Akir Recha Lama Ikid Al Nemar Al Amad Akir Lama Akir Afal Pishlo Ikar Nikar Rashash. So even if not strike him, it's called wicked. Um, obviously, the story of Moses that he did. Uh, most of the mafarshim of the rabbi said that he did not physically hit the Egyptians at the beginning of the Book of Shemot, but he using the um, combination of the holy name of God to, um, to um, in a way, impose a heavenly punishment uh, of death of that person. That's the way Rashi and other tells us. Amar Zirir Amar Bichanin Nikra Chotesh Nemar Yivlo Akakti Bechuzka Uchti Vatichat Et Narim Gdola Meod so here, Zeiri tells us that he's also, in addition in that sense, he's called a sinner. He is a uh, pasul edut. He's disqualified to give uh, witnesses and he's called uh, the same as a uh, regular wicked person. That's the way the, the code said, Bet Yosef and others. Um, and Ravuna Amar Tikatset Dosh Nemar Zohar Amar Tishavir Ravuna Katz Yedah. רבי אלעזר אמר אין לו תקנה לו הקבורה שנאמר ואיש זרוע לא הארץ. כלומר רבי אלעזר נותן קרקע לבעלי זרועות שנאמר ואיש זרוע לא הארץ. In short, what they try to say is, it's uh, not only not in a spirit of, of Jewish law, but it's also a, um, deserve a severe punishment. ואמר יש לקיש מהליכתיב עובד אדמתו יסבל לחם, אם עושה אדם עצמו כעבד לאדמה, יסבל לחם, ואם לאו לא יסבל לחם. So the key idea is um, um, that uh, yeah, it's a kind of metaphor. That say that uh, the only one who toils in Torah study merits to understand and remember the Torah that he has learned. That's the Meiri. Amar Yosh Lakish Nochir Shabbat Chayim Mitash Nemar Veyom Vala Lo Ishbotu Vamar Amar Azara Shalem Zoyim Tatan Amar Rava Afilu Sheni Ba Shabbat VeLechshava Gabei Sheva Mitzvot Ki Chashiv Sheva Al Dasekum Vasei Lo Chashiv. So here we refer to the last one about. The idol worshiper who uh, basically, in um, we explained in the past several days that we have seven Noah High Lords, seven Noah High Commandments that applies to everyone. So he said that when we count the seven Noah High Laws, we count only those who require um, to one who sit and refrain from action, which is those included in a prohibition against performing a certain actions. But he does not uh, count mitzvot that require one to raise and take action. So it's a total different. A category Rashi tells us. 59. The Hadinim Kumaseu. So, as we said, one of the seven Noachai laws is the idea of establishing a court system. So, that's a positive commandment that applies to um, descendants of Noach as well. And Rashi said that they uh, not only have the obligation, they have the structure of making a court of justice that follows the uh, proper way of. 
So they, they said, Kum Vaseh V'Sheh Valda Seninud. It's basically an obligation to establish a court and carry out justice is also the prohibition against doing injustice. So you can go in both ways. V'amar B'Yohanan, Oved Kocholim Shosek Batu Acha Amita, Shlemar Torah, Tziva Lanu Moshe Morasha, Lanu Morasha V'Lolayim. So obviously you differentiate between idol worship. So in a way, if someone idol worship is prohibited from study Torah because um, in a way it's a, um, something that was given to us, but also is a desecration. So why we don't count it as a seven or high loss? Because the man that made the world, the man that made the world, the man that made the world, the man that made the So here they said that the uh, idol worshiper is treated like a high priest in the sense if he sit and study Torah. So what is the, how would that reconcile with the other notion? So they said, So here, the Gemara says, um, the idea that uh, the idol worshiper is treated like a high priest in the that they said that that specifically study Torah, it's applied to um, a, a, someone who's a non-Jewish who engages in a depth of study of the seven Ohaid laws. So it is, it is a mitzvah for a non-Jew to study the halachot that pertain to the seven universal Ohaid laws. When uh, he does those, is uh, obviously he's highly regarded. Rabbi Hanina ben Gamliel Omer Af Adam in Achai. So also the prohibition against uh, drinking blood from any form of animals. So that's a derivative from the uh, book of Genesis chapter 9 verse 4. They said, Ach basar ben afshud amolot uchelu. One flesh with his life uh, which is a, it's blood you shall not eat. Ze'ever minachai. That's a prohibition against eating, especially um, when an animal is alive. It's cruelty, obviously, to take part of animal, a living animal and eat it. But any form of drinking blood is prohibited. So only occupation of study with that for a non-Jew, it's a great, uh, we take it as a highly regard. He says also the blood from the living animal is also prohibited in this verse. So uh, as we said, it's one phase is the old notion of drinking blood. The other one is to take part of the animal, living animal, and eat it. So all this concept of study by Nanju is uh, highly regarded as a great um, fulfillment of uh, the mitzvah of study, the universal, seven universal loach law. And that's one of them. My tamad Rabbi Chaim ben Gabriel Karibay b'asar ben Avshalot Ochel d'mon ben Avshalot Ochel. So this is the phrases that apply specifically to that prohibition involved with um, living animals and drinking blood. Rabbanan Aul Mishra Shratzim Udata. The sages take it a different concept for those sentences in the Bible, and they apply it for uh, eating limbs from living, creeping animals. So the verse indicates that um, the prohibition does not apply to creeping animals. Um, which uh, we study on page 59b, whose blood is not considered separate from their flesh. So basically the whole concept of um, any div um, uh, indirect connection to blood is prohibited and th we basically said that that's uh, living animal, um, uh, the application of Rabbanan, how the sages interpreted. Uh, the sages hold that there is a, no um, specific prohibition when it's come to blood uh, from a living animal. So obviously it's prohibited, but they don't say that there's any specific verse that applies to that. So they said, um, So the sages said that that's applied, this, the text applies to a blood that uh, is spilled in the process of uh, bloodletting, which is the blood that um, comes from a soul that departs. That's the Gemara in uh, Kritut, page 20b. What's the purpose of um, uh, bringing this prohibition for the descendants of Noah and then repeat it when the Torah transmitted at the moment of revelation Sinai to the Jewish people that's already prohibited to Jewish people at the time that uh, it was prohibited to the sons of Noah that included obviously to the Jews so that's uh, preceding the receiving Torah to Sinai so they, um, it's a different here between the interpretation of the Rambam the Rambam in Perusha Mishnayot, in the Tractate Chulin, Chapter 7, he explained that um, the obligation upon the Jews, it's kind of um, a um, separate obligation, um, not because it's part of Noahide laws. But anyway, regardless, so the, the, the explanation they said, it's... Um, uh, so the Rambam explained that 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 the Rambam explained that
So Rabbi Yosef Bachanya said that anything that uh, was, was uh, first stated with regard to the descent of Noah and repeated to the time of Revelation Mount of Sinai was started for this group uh, applies to both to a non-Jews and Jews as well. So he said that the difference is when it comes to the prohibition against eating a sciatic nerve, which is a kind of classification applies um, um, according to Abuda, um, after the story of Jacob uh, Russell with the uh, angel, that was said in Genesis chapter 32, verse 32, and I quote, Therefore the children of Israel do not eat the sciatic nerve, which is one of the um, a, um, hollow of the thigh until this day. So uh, we basically refer here to the uh, sons of uh, Jacob, who are commanded to observe this prohibition, even though the, the status of the descendants of Noah, but still that's kind of um, a specific addition to uh, under that uh, story of uh, Jacob Russell with the angel. So said, it, since you repeat it in Mount Sinai in the time of Revelation, it should be specifically for the Jewish people. So they said, because we have the fact that the prohibition of idol worshipping uh, is repeated in Sinai, so we find that God punish those idol worshippers for it. So that concluded that this mitzvah was repeated at Sinai, was stated for this group and for that group, and not only for the Jewish people. Because you don't repeat it in time of revelation, it should be solely for the sons of Noach. So he said, So they said, there is nothing that is permitted to a Jew and forbidden to those um, idol worshippers. So they said, Vela Fatwal. So the famous uh, uh, prohibition against a uh, um, Fatwal, which is a famous um, prohibition in the book of uh, Dvarim. So they said, Atamishum Delabne Kibushninu. So not authorized to conquer. It. So it is not permitted to those idol worshippers towards a war of conquest and the halacha of marrying and that Yefat Torah is stated only with regard to war conquest. So you see the fact that the Yefat Torah, who is a uh, prisoner of war, is permitted only, um, is not indicated by any means that they have a higher degree of sanctity. Because they're not part of the forgiving of death. So we said in general that any mitzvah that was given to the descent of Noah and repeated at the time of revelation of Sinai is for both group, this one and that one, both meaning the Bnei Noah and also to Bnei Israel. Page 59b. So the Gemara asks, Vare Mila, the mitzvah of the, uh, having the Brit, the circumcision. They said the sons of Noah, Abraham and his descendants, who is the status of the descendants of Noah, they said that you should. Uh, keep my covenant in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 17. So that's mean, that means that it's applied to Abraham and his descendants, and that's considered part of the Noah because they are before the giving of the Torah. So they said, Venishnet Besinai, we said it again in the book of Leviticus chapter 12, they said, Ubayom Ashni Imol, they said that the eighth day it should be a circumstance. So the obligation to do the Brit Milah applies only to the um, Jewish people, the Marashah, the Marashal, and others, to Sfot Rosh, um, have a lot to say, but we just give you the vignette, the key point. So that's the whole idea of we allow, if it's a Brit Milah, the exact eight day, according to the Shabbat, that um, overrule the, the, uh, the Shabbat, and therefore we allow to have Brit Milah, the circumcision on Shabbat, Bayom Bafilu Shabbat. That's the fruitful and so said, So this applies to anything that 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 uh, prohibited by an uh, official vote of the Sanhedrin require another vote to permit it. So even you have this type of forbidding prohibition is no longer relevant, it is uh, automatically cancelled, but rather a, a special ruling is requested to cancel it. So that's, uh, you, you derive it from the 
uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, specifically cancel the prohibition that has issue before the giving of the Torah. So you basically nervous, we said early. That's one explanation. So that's specifically to Abraham. They said, So that's specific to Abraham. It also applies to the descent of Ishmael when it's come to Brit Milah. Even it was given after receiving the Torah because Ishmael was the son of Abraham. So Yad Ramai explained that um, that obligation should be for both. Uh, the Zohar said that that's the reason why they prosper. But anyway, so they said, Ki So he said, Bnei Yisab Lechayvu. So he said, Bitzchak Velo Kol Yitzchak. Mat Kevar Arushal Amata Bnei Ketura Lo Lechayvu. So he said, if that's the case, so the sons of Keturah, which some said was a gal, it's depend on the view, so they, they should not have the obligation to uh, observe the circumcision. So obviously there is a, a lot of mefarshim that goes and explain what exactly happened in the Torah, in Keturah, so Rabbeinu Yonah and the Chidusha Aran, what exactly um, involved with the, but Hama Rabbi Yossi Bar Avin, Vitam Rabbi Yossi Bar Hanina, Ed Briti Heifar, they said they broken my covenant, you derive from that, that's included the sense of Ketura and the obligation to observe a circumcision. But as you see, there is a variety of explanation what exactly, uh, if the sons of Agar, how far they obligated with the Brit Milah. And you can see more in the Mepharshim here, and we'll continue with that, um, Mitzvah um, tomorrow. <laughs>